In New York, a celebration for Minna Citron. She's an artist. I hope I don't lose my upper plate when I blow. You're a little older than Jack Benny. Just don't lose it when you need it. I need help. You blow too. My mother and father had four sons, and my mother felt terrible because she wanted a daughter. So they kept trying. So I finally came along, and I was the only daughter. And they made a great fuss about me. I was in a co-ed school, manual training high school, and I guess I was in love with love, you know. And so I had lots of boys around that I was attracted to. And they loved to come to my mother's house because she was very friendly and beautiful. And I loved to listen to her because her taffeta petticoat rippled when she walked. And that petticoat had a ruffle on it and a, a, a rhythm, you know, and I loved it. And the taffeta petticoat also had my mother in it, and I loved her. This young man that I went around with, and I finally got married. We were kids together. I was 16 and he was 18. And we had good times together, you see? He was a good playmate. But when you get married and you're having children, a playmate isn't exactly what you need. You need a thoughtful person to be a good father to your children and to recognize that if you are a different kind of person, they have to recognize that. You see, he used to say, I never know where to put my hat when I come in because you've moved the piano. You see, so why can't you be like other people and just stay put, do nothing? We had the two children and I thought, that's it. That's all I want. I've got two children now, they're wonderful. And now what am I going to do with the rest of my life? So I went to the New York uh, School of Applied Design for Women and I came out with some honors and stuff. And I realized I didn't know how to draw a figure. So I went to the Art Students League and I signed up with Kenneth Hayes Miller who said, do what you feel like doing. It takes courage to be a woman without any money and leave a man who is very comfortable and get out into the world. Well, I suppose courage is not lacking in me. It's difficult, but you do it. So um, I up and left. It's 50 years later, and at a gallery party in New York, friends pay tribute to Minna Citron's life and work. Her drawings and paintings in the turbulent 1930s showed a society in pain. But later, American abstract painters, including Jackson Pollock, had a freeing influence on Minna's art. I think art is a wonderful therapy. It's like a good physic. You know, it's a psychological physic. It got rid of a lot of tensions and a lot of difficulties. When you get to be my age, you don't think so much of future, you think more of past, you see? And I, if you're talking about when you're 90, whether you're thinking about dying, you see, well, that's something people have to think about any time. Some people die younger, some people die older. I don't want to live to be terribly, terribly old. And when I die, that's that. But in the meantime, I just want to go on enjoying life if I can and working. I think I've done my best. It's a lot to take care of. I want to say that. Now the painting for that is my largest painting and my granddaughter out in Denver has it on loan, I hope. The paintings and the correspondence you have, with, I feel as though I'm curator to a career. And I just like to go on. And I love people and I love my friends. And I like new friends like you. <laughs> 